How are you doing? Good, how are you? Good. Uh, so just before we get started, just like to remind uh, you guys that uh, we do record our consultation. It's on the form and everything, but it's just like another, another heads up about that. So just second there. Um, but other than that, I read a little bit of your form, uh, waffles, correct? Mm -hmm. Um, I think I saw like just like basic stuff, their obedience matters and stuff like that. Um, but go ahead, just fill me in on waffles, you know, you know, with any important information that you think I should know about. And then I'll be jotting down notes as you go along and then we will go from there. Okay. Sounds good. Um, so she's a one-year-old German shepherd. And just generally needs, like you just said, basic obedience work. Um, we have a two and a half year old daughter. So she's getting to the size now that she's 70 plus pounds and is just big and can knock her over. So um, getting her to be able to like go to a place, um, you know, and sit and and all that stuff. Um, she is really receptive to training. She really wants to please, which is awesome. Um, so I think she'll, she'll catch on really quickly. I just honestly just haven't been consistent with her and haven't had the time to do the training. Um, and we also have, and I guess I can talk with you about this later, but we also have a four-year-old male Husky who lives with us. Um, and they get along really well. She, uh, Waffles is very submissive. Um, she plays really well, um, but he he has his he he can get pretty aggressive. So we'll chat about him at maybe a different consultation meeting. Um, but we wanted to focus on Waffles for the time being, and it's to the point too. I want to be able to walk with her with the stroller, um, and having her be able to heal, um, and all that. So. Okay. Okay. Um, for waffles, um, how is she on the walks usually? Um, so I use the prong collar for her. Okay. And so that is like the best way to be able to control her. She definitely pulls. Um, but is able to stay on your side she just needs consistent reassurance to stay on your side okay. she is other dogs um so just barking at other dogs if you let like if she, if if I, if we didn't say anything she would just like bark and lunge and jump um and also actually we live in the suburbs so we don't see a ton of people but I guess she would probably be reactive to people too if she saw him walking. Yes. I love when people come in the home, strangers. Yeah, like she just has the natural guard dog instinct. Okay. Yeah. So when, when someone comes in and she doesn't know them, um, her first reaction is to bark at them, correct? Bark and growl, yeah. Does she ever settle? Does she ever come around? Does she ever like, you know, okay. Yeah, she's pretty quick to, as soon as we kind of reassure her, then she'll go up to the person and like want pets and stuff like that. I see. Okay. Um, does the barking or that territorial ever kick back in while your guest is still there to that guest? <clears throat> or is she completely settled throughout the whole rest of that guest stay? She's, she's usually completely settled. Okay, that's good to know. Okay, yeah, that's pretty normal. Uh, territorial behavior is, you know, in any every dog. Um, it just depends on what that dog decides after the person comes in. So a lot of times, you know, the usual happy-go-lucky dog will realize, oh, it's a human, and then they get wiggly, and then it's it's cool, right? Um, so that's good to hear. Um, anything else we should know about waffles or any other goals you have with her besides, you know, more stationary control in the home, the walking stuff. Um, Anything else? She, um, in general, through doors and through gates, like baby gates, she'll just like barrel through. So okay. like, as like we open like the bedroom door or something, she'll charge or like 
she's 10 out of 10 with her movements <laughs> okay yeah we thought she was Malinois for a little bit because we're like she's a crackhead um uh, but she's not she's just a German shepherd um so yeah so that is something that needs to stop because she's like barreling through doors got it okay um anything else um no not with her I don't think so okay um and then do you know what kind of prong collar you have it's a two-prong metal Collar. I also have an e-collar. Okay. Um, I don't know brand. I can grab it and show you if you um, bring it. Yeah, well, we'll talk about it later. We'll see. Um, and then how familiar are you with like the e-collar tool? Has has you have you used e-collar yet on any of your dogs or <clears throat> so years ago I had a giant schnauzer and I trained her with I believe it was called Canine Academy. Um, I didn't do shoot soon with her, but we did like guard dog training. So in the past, I've been consistent with training dogs. I just have not now. Um, and so I'm fairly, so with that, with them, we typically just used a regular choke collar and a leather lead and then, um, the E collar as needed, um, I guess I need a refresher on all that stuff because it's been it's been some time. Um yeah, you know, there's many trainers around the area. I think when it comes to like sport and bite work and things like that, we have similarities, right? Um with the e-car and things like that. So that's cool. That's good to know. Um and then so you still have do you remember the brand of that e-collar off the top of your head? It's one of the like hunting brands. You can get it at Cabela's. Oh, was it um what is the name? Sport Dog? Yeah. Yeah, it is. It's like, yeah. Okay. Anything else about waffles? Or does that pretty much cover everything? She's got a weird ism. I don't know that this is something trainable, but she eats poop. Oh, okay. Like um goose poop dog poop her own poop or anything dog poop yeah so we've tried we've talked with the vet about that and he said she might not outgrow it so I don't know if that's a training behavior thing we've tried putting the e-collar on her when she's outside by herself and that seems to help but again it's just the consistency key to it um what else have you used the e-collar for with waffles um we've used it in the house um and it seems like she just gets she'll get startled and then just kind of like run away okay um so i i kind of stopped using it because i want to i want to use it in the right way from the start without like creating a bad like that creating a bad behavior in her yes. so okay. it's almost like she runs away because she doesn't know where it's coming from yeah. yeah. Um, you know, when a dog first feels the e collar, their first reaction is to get away from the feeling. So that running away is completely normal, especially, um, you know, this is brand new and stuff like that. But that's good to know. Okay. Anything else? I don't think so. Um, so, sounds like you have a, um, you know, a, a good amount of background and, you know, experience with the e collar and handling dogs and stuff like that. Um, so that's good to know. But um, so, you know, um, were you interested in, you know, going forth a boarding train or like an in-person? Because it sounds like, you know, you have a lot, you know, your busy life and everything. Because um, I can talk about how what the programs kind of cover um, pros and cons with all of them. Because you have the boarding train, daycare and train, sorry, and the in-person. Um, yeah. Could you just kind of go over just general general what you usually recommend like what all the options are and what you recommend yeah so for waffles um since you already have the background um and we're just dealing with just basic mannerisms and general obedience here any of these programs would be very like, good for you they'd be fine right however we always do push for the in-person one-on-one um, but that does require like you know homework and time and uh, things like that so it wouldn't be an issue <clears throat> if you wanted to if you want us to layer in the foundation at least and then from there 
it's just reinforcing just continuing it from there right okay. um, which that would be like the boring training so um with the boring training program uh, we have the one week two week three week and a four week from everything i'm hearing your waffles is, is more in the two week board and train program. Um, during this program, waffles will be learning all six commands, which are heal, place, stay, sit, down, and come. Okay. Um, for the first week, you're going to get a one hour long introduction video. This video uh, will be showing Waffles react to the ECOG for the very first time with each command, right? So you'll see everything brand new to her. Um, it will be done with one of our trainers, Elias. He handles the boring trains and daycare and trains here. Uh, so Elias will be the trainer in the video kind of walking through, you know, like how we're teaching these commands, right? Um, once Elias teaches a command, then that allows the other um handlers here to continue to practice these commands so that she's getting sessions all day constantly you know she's getting the repetition because repetition is very important in dog training right um so that's like the first week any questions so far about that okay. um the second week um we go ahead and do another video but this video is called the long leash phase this is when we're transferring all six commands uh, to the long leash. So we're basically just advancing her obedience so that um, it's easier to do off leash if you want, right? So we use a 30 foot long leash and we're telling her heel, we're telling her stay, we're telling her sit, we're telling her come, place, all these things. And she has to learn now from with all this room to make error, what's what's the choice she's going to make here, right? So we're just kind of um, basically sharpening up her obedience that second week there. During her stay here, um, obviously she's getting that training, right? Uh, she'll also be able to socialize with the dogs. Um, she'll be practicing duration work, which is basically when she's laying on her bed, her her, her place caught while there's a lot of stuff going on. Uh, dogs are on tremors, the play group's going on, other training sessions are happening in front of her. Uh, so she's getting exposed to all these distractions, learning to stay on the bed and just to not hop off, right? Um, we have treadmills here as well, so it's just another like a, a way, um, another way to exercise our dogs here in case it's too cold for 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 us to take her on a training walk. Um, and then yes, training walks happen here as well. Um, it's very important for us to make sure that we are exposing the dogs to the tool outdoors, right? Because if you know Waffles is able to perform very well in our facility, but can't perform outside then there's no point of the training, right? So we have to make sure that the training is also reliable outside. Um, and then we do a trip to Home Depot as well to, you know, new environment, machinery going on, people walking around. So we make sure she's doing good in, that, in those situations as well. Um, we can, it's pretty easy to handle her, you know, uh, you know, the dog with the econ, you know, if they have the foundation of healing, everything like that with the stroller, uh, we don't have any strollers here, so we can't really mimic that for you, but it's very easy and we can probably give it a shot with uh, carts at Home Depot or something like that. Um, you can if you want. Well, you probably need a stroller, um, but that would be more of like a follow up. Sorry. Yeah, okay. So we like bring an extra one or we can talk more if we did like a one on one session or something. Yeah. So um, the other thing that comes with the board and training programs are follow-up lessons, like in person. So you still get that in-person um, experience with the board and training programs. With the two-week board and training program, four hours of in-person comes with that, okay? Uh, we always recommend that upon pickup, you can just, if you can just do a quick one hour, at least follow-up so that you can uh, get familiar with the tool the walking at least and some place stuff maybe to get up get you started off at home yeah um, makes sense the rest of the hours can be scheduled whenever you want right so uh, let's say you're practicing everything's going well and then maybe you try the stroller and it goes well and it's easy and you don't need to do a follow-up and that's perfect um or maybe uh let's say um i don't know uh you know, something is like not consistent, like place. I mean, she keeps hopping off and you're like, well, why should she be hopping off, right? Then we can do a follow-up on there, covering or going over place. 
Uh, so those are scheduled however you want, but we always do recommend like that first one right away. Um, any questions about that so far? I did forget to mention, um, she does have a little bit of separation anxiety from me. Um, so when she's in the boarding, a boarding situation, she'll usually need like an anxiolytic. But I also think it's because she's like not being worked during that time and like her mind isn't being, you know what I mean? Yeah. Um, an anxiolytic, is that a medication? Yeah, like an anxiety medication. Um, I'll leave, you can, if you want, you know, you can, you can uh, pack it with her belongings and everything. And if we feel like we need it, we can apply it. But um, usually that's something we work on, you know, um, we he here we run a, a quiet kennel. Uh, today we have like 50 dogs and it's just quiet, right? Neighbors, um, our neighbors are the, the canine unit. And the moment oh. opens their door, they blow up. They just all bark, right? But our dogs actually still stay quiet, right? Uh, so we run a quiet kennel. So we'll make sure she's settled and everything because it's nothing new to us. We know when a new dog comes in, they're very anxious, but that's something we can kind of work on. Um, okay. I feel like we need more help, which we haven't really done that in a while. There's one specific dog that kind of needed it, but that was because he had like human aggression as well, right? Uh, so he yeah. needed he needed a little bit of help there, but um, yeah, you can pack it. We'll see if she needs it or not, but uh, you shouldn't it shouldn't be that much of an issue. Okay. Um, when we begin working the e-collar. Um, the first thing we teach Waffles is heal. Okay, our version of heal is walk with me, stay with me, and sit when I stop. Okay, so whenever we take five steps with Waffles, Waffles takes five steps. If we take 10, she takes 10. We come to a stop. She's to automatically sit with no words, shoulder parallel to her leg. This is done with a loose leash in any environment. I don't care what's going on. I don't care how many dogs are around. That's how strict the heel needs to be. Now, it's not so much of a a focused heel where they're always looking at you. Uh, it's more of like kind of passive where we're, you know, dogs have a very wide peripheral range, right? So that she's able to kind of keep on the eye and the leg and keep in that position throughout the whole walk, right? So the reason why this is the first thing we teach, <clears throat> well, the obvious reason would be like, you know, for the obedience, right? Um, but the other reason would be uh, teaching her how pressure works and how she can turn it off and how it turns on okay um basically teaching her you know when this happens pressure turns on and we're turning around she comes to us pressure turns off oh so if i go to elias the pressure turns off right this is having her understand just where it's coming from how it comes and when it's going to approach her right um the other reason why uh, we teach this first is for reactivity. Okay, so a lot of times you might have heard the obedience never fixes behavior, which is true, right? Obedience is separate from behavior. They're two different things, okay? Um, if my dog is barking and biting people who come in the home, teaching place will not fix that. The right. more the dog's off place, they're just going to bite the guy, right? You have to teach behavior for behavior. However, with the way we teach heal, it does affect reactivity because let's say we're working with her and maybe like her number is 30, right? That's the number that's concerning to her and that's what she's, um, you know, responsive to, right? 30. Um, for her, if the heal is so strict and important to her, technically that dog across the street shouldn't matter because she's more focused on 30 and you. Does that make sense? Yeah, you just there. You don't use a choke collar. You're only doing e collars. Yeah, it's only e collar. Um, you, uh, um, and you, you say choke collar. You mean prong collar or the slip chains? Just a slip chain. You can, you know, um, whatever is connected to the dog's neck doesn't really matter. Uh, we always tell clients as long as it's not a harness, because the harness promotes pulling and it can kind of give different, different uh, messages to the dog. You know. One tool is telling them not to pull, the other tool is telling them to pull. It can get confusing. But slip chain, prong collar, uh, gentle leader, flat collar, if you want, it doesn't really matter. Um, whatever, it's kind of personal preference for you. Okay. Um, 
I said there was a moment where I said 30, right? The number might be 30. <clears throat> the brand we use is called Doctra. Are you mm -hmm. familiar with Doctra? Um, Jesse's used many other brands throughout his career. He's the owner and founder of the company. Um, and he found Doctra was the best one. Um, his second go-to would be Eco Technologies, like the mini educator and stuff like that. Um, but there is like the way the stimulation is delivered is different between brands, right? Um, Eco Technologies has a more sharper stem. Uh, so as Jesse was working with anxious or aggressive dogs, it was also make them, it was making them more agitated. He switched them to Dotra and Dotra delivers a more duller stimulation and they weren't as uh, like nervy with the Yeah. Um, it's also very simple to use. Uh, it goes up to 127, right? So there are some other e out there that go to um, eight, right? So don't think we have 100 more levels their maximum eight and our maximum 127 are equal, right? They feel the same, but we have so many more breaks and, you know, numbers to be more specific to the dog's personality, the breed, the scenario we're in, right? Um, so we usually don't go for sport dog <clears throat> just because we find that, you know, everyday use, it can kind of get confusing for some clients, but you've had experience with it and everything. Like that. But usually what we find uh, to be more effective is like the dog to brand, right? Um, Dog is waterproof, you know, mile to half mile long range, rechargeable, um, easy, simple to use. You have your Nick continuous pager function. There's no beeper or toner. Um, and we'll be using stim only. We don't use vibrate. Uh, the reasons for that is because we find that um, we don't we don't like any warnings besides that verbal, right? So basically I say sit, it's a sit. Uh, for pager, sometimes dogs get thrown off with the pager. Because uh, sometimes clients will come to us, they say, yeah, so we, we were taught sit, they don't sit, we beep, they don't, they don't respond to the beep, we pager, they don't respond to the pager, then we nick, right, so I have these, all these, like, four steps, right, so if your dog is running away, are you really going to go through all these four steps to kind of get the dog to stop, right, uh, so that nick function, that immediate um, consequence, right, that's what makes the speed happen. That's what makes the that's what makes the command happen every single time, right? Um, pager also sometimes dogs get used to it because the pager uh, doesn't have like a level system with it, so you can't increase the intensity of the vibrate or lower it, right? So if a dog is overwhelmed by the pager, you can't you can't make it softer, right? Or if a dog's blowing the pager off, you can't make it more intense. Um, that makes sense. Yeah, for sure. Um, any questions about programs, e cars so far? Nope. Um, common question we get is, uh, you know, is it on all day, overnight, in the home, only on walks, or, you know, does my dog graduate from it and I don't need it? Um, the e car is going to be on when you need it, basically. Okay. Um, for walks, we always recommend whenever you go outside or you're going to go for a walk, the e car is on. All right, my mm -hmm. dogs got ECOT trained when when she, when she was four months old. Um, she's four years old now. She's also a German Shepherd. Um, so uh, you know, I still put it on every single time we go outside. One, because she's not. I just walk her off leash now, right? But if I had a leash on, it would still be on because I can't predict what's going to happen on this walk. Right. right? Um, she's never experienced a car backfiring. She's never experienced a firework going off in you know, close proximity. Uh, so when those situations arise or they come up, I have my tool to ensure that she won't run away or maybe you know, accidents happen, crawl collars fall apart, leashes slip out. You know, we heard a lot of stories. Uh, so when a dog's in flight mode running away, you know, they're thinking kill or be killed. Like they're running for their life. So sometimes, Waffles come might not be that, you know, important to her because she's thinking, I got to run, right? So then you have your e-collar to override your dog in flight mode, make them do the 180 and come back to you, right? Mm -hmm. uh, in the home, um, personal preference there, you know, if you're going to have a guest come over, you know, she's going to bark, we'll give you a few exercises to kind of tame her, you know, so she's not, you know, throwing your guest off or anything like that or the baby or, you know, stuff like that. 
Um, but then maybe you're, maybe the guest comes in, she's fine, right? Like you said, then you can take it off. It doesn't matter. Um, mm -hmm. But usually what we find when, when clients are, you know, they just had a baby, econ is really on most of the day, you know, mm -hmm. they're just, you know, like you said, doing duration work, um, you know, while they're taking care of the baby, now they're going to leave the room with the baby or break dot coms, do this duration work here. And there's a, a lot of, a lot of controls happening and it makes your life way easier that they don't need to physically do anything to the dog. It's using a remote or, you know, if it's there, if you need it, uh, but it's more, much more control as you're going throughout the day, right? The more consistent you are in the home, you know, there could be a chance where, you know, she's doing all these commands without the collar, mm -hmm. right? All dogs are different though, right? So um, I've had clients tell me <clears throat> the moment that e is not on, that dog is pulling or anxious, right? I've had other clients tell me, yeah, we took our dog to the patio, no e collar, and she did like, she did well. I was like, great. Um, <clears throat> It's a nature thing, you know, yeah. it's a behavior. Um, humans are opportunistic creatures as well. Um, the example we like to use for our clients is, uh, you know, I'll say, you know, do you drive on the highway? They'll say, yes. I'll say, do you go to the speed limit? They're like, no. And I'm like, well, what happens when you see a squad car? Well, I slow down, right? Um, if we know we can get away with something, we're going to get away with it. Same thing with the dogs. Uh, there are some dogs where are more opportunistic than others, though. Um, any questions about that? No, I'm laughing because my giant schnauzer was a pain in the ass like that. <laughs> and so. there, there is ways, you know, mm. to make that transference easier, you know, um, like methods and everything, but it's a lot, it's a lot of work, a lot of consistency. It's more of like a trainer, you know, because, um, you know, that's just their life, they're training dogs, right? Um, but, you know, we like to tell owners just have it on, so it's just saving mm -hmm. less. No less work for you guys. Um, what else? Is there anything else? Any questions so far? Mm -hmm. Um, your other dog. Uh, what's his name or her? Uh, it's a male, Luke. Luke. Yeah. Luke and Waffles. <clears throat> um. So you you can get both of them trained, right? Now you would be saving a lot more money because um, then there is just basically I think there's just like an additional dog fee. I think. Okay, that was my that was gonna be my question, and if yeah, okay, cool. Versus you know waiting and then you know buying a a separate program which is gonna be costing more, right? So um, you know I I always leave it to the owner's personal preference if you want. You know, maybe, you know, sometimes clients were like, no, I want to see how Waffles comes out first. And then I'll do the other dog. I was like, okay. But, you know, what, what do you think about that? Are we able to talk about him in this session? Okay. Um, okay. So to give you, just to kind of go over his personality, um, we originally had two Huskies and our other Husky passed away about a year ago and he was another male. And so those two were would very physically play with one another and Luke would always Luke was the sum, like submissive to the other one but it was always like a fight for dominance so we've noticed that since the other one passed away his demeanor has changed towards other dogs a little bit I tried to put him in daycare a couple months ago and I got a phone call saying that he didn't pass the daycare Behavior. he got in like multiple dog fights he's never been aggressive towards humans but they said like the trainer like stupidly put their hand in and they knew that like the trainer got caught up in it like it wasn't intentional um so he's also he will be dominant over waffles and she's got a couple of cuts on her face from him like going at her there's some food um food issues food guarding which i try to nip in the bud but yeah so him i'm concerned about and also uh, to be perfectly frank i don't know how intelligent he is to be trained <laughs> um he's not huskies aren't I, I don't know you obviously are 
the expert at this, but his ability to listen and his brain power, I don't know. I would be amazed if you could get him to do those six commands kind of a situation. But I, I think his behavior needs to change because I need to be able to know that I can bring him to a dog park. Because at this point, I don't bring him to dog parks. He doesn't go into daycare with other dogs. Um, yeah, so. How old is he? He's four. Oh, okay. Um, he's on a prong collar as well? Yeah, uh, yeah. Okay, how do, you, how do you take to the prong collar? He's he's actually much more receptive than Waffles is. Okay. Uh, I actually run with him. I put him in like a um like a pulling like a a dog racing a sled dog racing harness, and I run with him. Um, so he naturally pulls. So we've never gotten him to the point that he could heal unless he's in a prong collar. And then um. Is he also reactive to other dogs or he kind of minds his own or? Doesn't care on walks. It's only when um, we think it's when I'm in the room too. Like it's like a dominance issue, like over me. And then also, I guess now on his own too. It's just other dogs like in his space. I see. Okay. Um, anything else to you know about Luke? No, that's it, I think. Okay. Um, so for him, um, it'd be, you know, same concept, same routine as waffles would be going through. Um, we can cover the resource guarding, the food stuff. We can learn a few exercises. However, uh, it's not, uh, it's very common. Because when the dogs get here, like training is starting right away. Okay. Mm -hmm. Sometimes when a dog um, is in a new place and they're getting that obedience and that discipline and the structure right away, right, that they might not even try to resource guard because they're like, this place is like pretty strict. I'm yeah, getting away with it. Yeah. Well, there is a chance we might not see it, but we can still do exercises because technically we don't even need to see the resource guarding. Okay. Uh, so that's something we can cover here with Luke. Um, the other thing would be if you're wanting to work on socialization, um, what I would do is definitely start muzzle conditioning him. Okay. Yeah, perfect. Um, the muzzles we like to use is called Baskerville. Uh, Baskerville is like a basket shaped muzzle. It allows dogs to open their mouth, breathe, pant, they can drink water, they can eat, they can take treats from it. So it's a cool little, like, uh, it's a cool muzzle to use, you know, with food and stuff to condition him. Um, the reason why I'm telling you to condition him now is a muzzle is a stressor for a dog. Mm -hmm. right? It's like it's on their face, they're annoyed by it, whatever, right? So we have to think about when we're bringing him to a social play group or you know, with another dog, right? That dog is a stressor. The muzzle is a stressor. Um, the e-collar is also a stressor. Right? You have three stressors already happening at once. So we can at least get one thing that muzzle um, kind of, uh, you know, having to be cool with it a little bit. Um, it, can, it can make things kind of go flow a little easier. Um, Again, all dogs are different. Some dogs do really well in most conditioning. Some dogs never really like like want it on, right? And then we can do some e collar and some more training here with that muscle. It's like not an issue for him. So that's something we can work on as well if it's not going well at home or if you don't have time, right? Um, for like the dog parks and everything, <clears throat> the only thing that's difficult is. If he's here, and let's say there's a dog that's getting into his space, and I can tell he's uncomfortable, I can do two things. I can either wait and see what he's going to do, or I can intervene and tell that dog, F off, go bother someone else, right? Mm -hmm. But if you were at a dog park, you can't really do that. Right. 
So let's say you're at the dog park and Luke's doing well. And let's say a dog's approaching him and he feels uncomfortable and he decides to back off. So he's like, I feel comfortable. I'm going to leave. But if that dog keeps pursuing him, there's really nothing you can do. And it's, it's, um, maybe you, cause you can't control these other dogs, right? I mm -hmm. can't, I can't control, you know, having an intact male coming in and his space or, you know, everyone, I want everyone to be not intact and I can't, you can't do that. Right. Right. Yeah. But the most you can do is just have him not uh, snap or be too uh, assertive or, you know, paranoid about the other dog, right? That's the most we can do. The rest is on him if he wants to play. Um, and then the rest is also on, like, the environment and the other dogs, right? Because here, easy, right? I can choose which dog I want. I can choose, like, calm, calm golden female who's going to be easy, um, I can up it and maybe do a little playful dog, right? But I, I can I can change things for him and kind of work him up, right? Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. Um, we've had huskies before. Um, we've also had the Shibas, uh, so we're familiar. We always we had an Akita recently too, and he did really well, surprisingly, because we were expecting, you know. Because they're a very confident breed, and you know, if you're telling them to do something, they don't want to do it, they will throw a fit, right? Um, so we have experience with these these uh, more primal breeds. Um, we've had our we have had a, a, a few Shibas who were very vocal and very like you know they wanted to do their own thing, and then we were able to you know get the results still. Okay, um, so the husky thing won't, won't be anything new for us. Um, what else? How much does he weigh? He's he's a little bit lighter. He's like between fifties and sixties. Oh, okay. <clears throat> now, um, as for the e collar stuff, right? You have a few options here as well. Um, you can do what's called two remotes. And you can get a dual dial remote. So it's one remote that controls two dogs. Oh. On the front, you'll see NCP, Nick Continuous Pager. And then on your screen, you'll see dog one and dog two. It comes with two dials. So let's say Luke's number is 20 and then uh, Waffles is 50, right? Yeah. They, can, they both have their separate numbers and then their separate sides. So front NCP, side NCP. And then dog one's front, dog two's on the side. Okay. Okay. Option one. The other option would be um, you get two two dial remotes, two dual dial remotes. Okay. So sometimes clients will come to us and say they want another one because the other person walks the other dog, or maybe you know two dogs. I just they just they prefer to have two remotes so that you know you can walk waffles and then whoever else can walk luke if you have another person that, that walks the dogs with you right um if you find that you're 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 mostly the only one that handles the dogs and i wouldn't worry about it but then the two remotes would control both dogs right um so, sorry, do you want us to buy these before we come yeah so we used to sell them right now we don't we ran out and we're not sure when we'll get them back in stock um, but everything, prices, programs, uh, e-collars will all be sent in a follow-up email after a consultation. So you'll, you'll get all the links and stuff like that. And you'll kind of see which one might work best for you. Okay. Um, what else? So again, dual dial, one dual dial controlling both remotes. Or if you want two dual dials, that's also a personal preference for you. So multiple, multiple, multiple people can walk their dogs. Um, any questions about Luke's stay here? It would be really much, pretty much the same. It's just in you know different intensity depending on how he takes the pressure, right? So that's why I asked how he took up the prong pressure, right? Because usually, if it doesn't have an issue with pressure, you'll see you would you would have seen it with the prong, right? Um, yeah, I've tried the e collar with him, but he's too scruffy. I think I have to like shave a square in his neck. I don't know if you guys do that with the fluffy dogs, but. Yeah, so for the fluffy dogs, you have a few options here as well. Uh, you can either do longer probes, so longer prongs on your e-collar, or 
don't know if you ever heard of these, but the wings, they're like these copper, they're like wings that like go into the fur, right? Into oh. like the toes. So like that's another option. Um, however, what we find with the wings, it does muffle the power. So for some reason, it's an issue. We'll probably go for the longer probes. But while he's here, we because we have we sell those, we can kind of see what works best for you, and then we'll kind of let you know at the end. Um, what else? While they're uh, oh sorry, go ahead. Um, while they're here, um, overnight they're in kennel runs. Okay, so like the stalls, um, they're heated floors. And sometimes owners want their dogs sleeping together. What's your take on that? You, would you want them in the same stall or would you want them separate stalls? They're okay to sleep together. I think she'll probably do better with that anxiety overnight. All right. And that's that's good actually, the stalls. Um, in the past when Luke was like a more of a puppy and when he was like one or two years old, he had some issues with being like in the crates and like clawing until his like, like until he bled basically. Okay. Um, do you care about that? Do you want to work on that or? No. Yeah. Sounds good. Um, and then uh, you, what were you going to say? I interrupted you. Sorry. Who said what I was going to say? Ask. So that works for me. Okay. Um, so on top of the e collars, how we're introducing it to them, uh, usually by week two is when we'll start to like teach them to like walk on heel uh, with each other. Mm -hmm. Side preference, we our go to is left side. Do you have a side preference, right side or left side, or? I prefer left side. Uh, so we'll be teaching them to walk on the left side week two together. So we'll start to do that. Um, side by side, so not. So them both next to each other. Do you do you want other wise? No, no, that no, that's fine. I haven't been able to do that. She is very, she's still very much like puppy. So uh, she'll with him if they're next to each other. Okay. So yeah, we'll do side by side, left side. Um, I don't really know right now if Waffles prefers to be inside or outside. Same thing with Luke. They kind of figure that out as we're going along with their preferences. Um what else again you can you can continue the prong collar stuff um it's up to you resource guarding with luke thresholds with waffles and then i talk about the follow-up um a lot of times clients you know uh you know think the boarding train is like like you're sending your car to get like a, a you know a new tire and it comes back like a brand new car right um once you do that follow-up and the dogs realize oh this is just like jesse's facility the econ right. right they'll start right. to get into that mindset like okay the rules are still applying here it's not like i'm back in my kingdom my house i can do what i want right so it'll be normal for that first day to see them like go back to their old ways. But then once you start to kick it in, you know, with the knowledge we're giving you and the exercises, you should start to see them kind of realize, oh shit, you know. Um, what else? Any questions? Um, oh, 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 sorry. No, no. Um, so uh, I live or I live, I work pretty close by, I think, your facility. Um what are your like daycare hours or how does that all work? Yeah. Um, so for the daycare, <clears throat> we do have like that evaluation process, but if you're training with us, it doesn't really matter. Uh, yeah. So we open up at 7 a.m. Uh, drop off ends at 10 a.m. Pickup starts at 3 p.m. and pickup ends at 7 p.m. However, you can pick up your dog's up until 10 p.m., you'll just be receiving a late fee because it's after 7 p.m. Um, weekends, we open up at 8 a.m. and then we close at 6 p.m., but you can still pick up your dog at 10 p.m. on the weekends. Okay. Um, what else? 
Um, and so if it's like daycare and train, is that like, so like, let's say we do the two weeks of board and train, does that like, is all daycare, daycare and train or? Yeah, so um, there's like, so the daycare and train is basically the same thing as a board and train, but they're not boarding, right? Um, if you're doing a regular daycare, that, then there is no training, but we still work on duration work, right? Um, for a regular daycare dog, what their day looks like, uh, basically it's an hour off and an hour on an activity. The activity could be treadmill, duration work, or social, uh, you know, social groups. Um, and then that hour off means rest time. Um, we believe here that, you know, when the dog is constantly in a free for all area and, you know, if they're wired up the whole day it's not really exhausting for them they're just going to go home and continue to be wired up so we like to get them like an hour rest between the activities throughout the day um for your daycare and train if you decide to go with that we have the 5 10 15 20 you would be more in the 10 or 15 okay since you have two dogs there right um so same thing same commands I think the follow-up hours are different for daycare and train. I would have to double check on that. Um, what else? I'm sorry, 10 to 15 days. Yeah, so uh, we have the five five day daycare and train program, the 10 daycare and train program, and the 15 daycare and train. The 10 Got daycare and train is equal to the two-week board and train. The 15 um, basically would give us kind of like more time um like to go over like that socializing right um mm -hmm. for luke we will do the best for day current for day train socialization however it might not it might be slower because we find that when a dog boards with us they acclimate the environment very quickly because they're just here right so just a heads up that they might not acclimate as fast as if they were boarding, but it still shouldn't be an issue. We'll still socialize them and things like that, but just like a like an FYI there. Um, okay. What else? Any questions about the daycare and training program? Um, nope. And then, yeah, no, I'm just eager to get them started. <laughs> um, did you want me to go over in-person or is that not really a thing you're thinking about? No, in person is possible for me. Um, it just depends on hours and if I could piggyback like a daycare session. I see. Okay. Um, is it like is it like one on one with the trainer or is it like group training? Be one on one with the trainer. Um, it would be it would be with me. Um. Or it could be with Jesse, kind of your personal preference there. Um, one hour once a week for either the six, nine, or 12 week program. Again, uh, you would be more in, you would be in the six week program. <clears throat> Since we're doing two dogs, um, we would add a 30 minutes to the first and second lesson, I think, I think it was. Uh, we will be going over your walking. Um, place and heel place. So two classes on heel, third class on place. How do you feel about recall? Would you like recall? We will not get it with Luke. I dare you to try, but yes, with waffles, I would like it. <laughs> so then recall, so you're probably more than nine week. We, okay. also go, we also need to go over the resource guarding and the socialization for Luke. Okay. Right. Well, most likely be nine week in person, just so it gives us more wiggle room, right? Because six week would be six week would be bare bones, but then there's no wiggle room for you. So I'd say nine week minimum for Luke and Waffles for the in person program. Uh, we meet. Don't do the boarding. This would be an alternative. Yeah, so this is like a separate program, right? Gotcha. Um, we meet here at the facility uh, an hour once a week. Um, if we happen to do it when it gets warmer outside, we do operate at Oz Park. 
um, just a lot of distractions like that, um, that area there. Um, but to be honest, I mean, I feel like, you know, the board chain or JP chain would be good for you and the in-person as well, whatever you choose here. It's just, you know, um, kind of just thinking about the schedule and everything and, you know, how busy you are with the baby and everything like that and what would be best for you. Um, cause this is all, this is very simple, right. Um, for us to do and at least layering that foundation and then you can just build from that. Right. Uh, so yeah. I kind of hear from hearing you and everything and, you know, uh, in person is always good though. Right. Cause in person it's all verbal instruction. We never really touch the dog. We're just telling you what to do. So the training from day one is already tied to you and you're there every step of the way. So if we're doing the boring training program and we're walking them together <clears throat> outside and let's say a dog starts barking at them, we don't film our walks. So you're not really going to see how we handle that, right? All we can do is really talk about it and hope we see it, you know, so that you can know how to, you know, address it, right? So that's like the only thing you'll be missing out. You know, that's like the con with these programs is that you're not there. So you're not seeing like, you know, the walks or something like that, right? Uh, the other um, at first would be that the training is tied to us for the board and train, daycare train. But the wonderful thing about e-collar is that it is very easily transferable. So let's say in the videos, Elias is working with the dogs and their numbers are like within the range of 20 and 25. Let's say it's just 25, right? Um, when you come in and you're working with them and you're operating at 25, 25 still feels like 25. Right. So there's never like, you know, when we work with couples or more than one person, it's never like, you know, well, he's stronger than her or she's more stronger than him. You know, all these things. It's like 25 is 25 for everyone. So the response right. is going to be the same as long as, you know, the right number is being practiced and the exercise are also being practiced correctly. As long as those two things are consistent, same results, same thing going on there. Um, any other questions? Um ultimately for waffles i'd also like to train her in the harness but with luke can we just work to incorporate a command so that he will still pull when um, i want him for running yeah so um our goal is when he's on the command heel <clears throat> that those rules i explained earlier are happening right now we do have an off switch, which would be break or okay or free dog, whatever you want to say, right? Which is then letting him know you can now do what you want, right? The moment you get set up with the harness and you start moving and you're running forward, um, he'll probably just kick back in to that pulling and you would just let that slide, right? Um, the other option is you can still do heel when you're running and he'll be next to you as you're running. So it's personal preference. You want him in the harness pulling right in front of you, that's fine. If you want more of a control jog and you want him here not pulling, that's also possible with the heel command. I'll leave that up to you, right? And you cool. want that, but you want that same, you want, so when you said you want waffles with the harness, what did you mean by that? Like for jogging? Yeah, so yeah, it's like, well, they call it canning cross. Have you ever heard of it? It's like racing with your dog oh okay so it's like a sport thing right okay yeah um i don't know how good she i haven't trained her yet in the harness to like run um she doesn't have that like natural pull instinct kind of like he does um so i don't know if we'll ever get there but yeah that makes sense like you, you would just have an off switch just like any other command and you would just incorporate new commands for for that that makes sense yeah um yeah you can even do you know if you have a specific word to like what do they say like mush or something yeah, they say like mush you know and then that's when like they start to pull right uh, so you can apply a different word if you want to that command um but yeah for waffles i mean it's easy for luke because he has no reactivity for waffles uh, making sure that the reactivity is like squash right there's none Right, because when you allow a dog to go into that mode, their energy is heightened. Right, mm -hmm. so it wouldn't be out of the ordinary if she sees a dog. She since he's already up there to react. But 
you know, you, you would have your e-collar or, or prong, whatever it is, as a backup to have more control to address that and just keep moving forward, right? Uh, so that's just another thing to keep an eye out is that, you know, if she's in heel and she's doing good, now reacting, perfect. But the moment when you do that uh, different scenario, that different command with her, and she starts getting more intense and tense up there, uh, that's probably why. But it should be really simple to address that either way. Um, eating poop. Um, <laughs> as uh, you know, as as you know, my dog, uh, she's obsessed with the geese, the goose poop. Um, so for there, I really just kind of use like the e collar to kind of catch her. So if I see her sniffing obsessively, I already know she's going for the goose poop when she smells it. So immediately there, I catch it, I correct her. I don't wait for her to find it. I correct mm -hmm. her so she stops thinking about it. And then when she sees it, you'll see her go like that. And she's like, oh, don't go by the goose poop, right? Uh, so it's more of just like, as you kind of go along with it. Now, um, if it's like, let's say like you don't have the e collar on, she's doing it. The most you can do is just like kind of catch her off guard, so like a yell, a clap, or like, you know, hey. Um, and then hope for the best there. But it's, it is it is it is pretty pretty difficult to turn that out of a puppy or a dog um, um, to stop the eating the poop there. But you know we'll talk about other methods and how to address behaviors without the e collar, so that everything's kind of consistent there in the home with you in case you don't have it on. Mm -hmm. um, anything else? No, I think you covered everything. Cool. Um, e collars. I think, yeah, I think I did get everything. Um, how many incidents has she, has uh, Luke and uh, Waffles had, like scuffles, you say? <clears throat> Is it like one every day? One every no. Day? no, it's probably been like 10 to 20 in the last year. Okay. Um, any, 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 any ones that needed like stitches or anything like that? She probably needed a suture for, for one or two of them, but we didn't take her. Okay. And then these were all because, uh, so her food guardian, like, or like toy, like high value toy or high value bone. So I'm pretty like now they just don't play with toys. Like now they're just not out. Um, Mostly food, and then sometimes he'll just catch her when they're playing. He will bite and stop moving. Like he, like 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 he he escalates a little bit too far with like the play. Yeah, I don't know how to just better than that, but okay. Um, do you think like from what you're saying? Do you think it's like? If they're playing, or if it's good, and then maybe is it like, can you tell if it's Willow? That's I mean, not Willow. Uh, Waffles. That's the one that's getting too amped and not stopping. Or do you think like we see from your perspective that Waffles is pretty much playing correctly, but it's more of like Luke that he's just kind of like out of nowhere, just like no. She's playing correctly. He has the issue. Okay. He he escalates. Yeah. Um. When you do, you walk them together at all? um rarely now because it's really hard because they're both pulling okay <laughs> have they had any uh scenarios where like you know if willow's if, i don't know what you saying willow if waffles right is reactive do they ever does she ever like redirect or like does luke try to correct her for that or do they ever have like tension there as we're walking no, no issues when, when they've been on walking, yeah. Um, cool. It's good to know. Just trying to get a background of, you know, this yeah. is there. Uh, but it sounds like like resource guarding. Uh, when we had a dog, um, we had to work with resource guarding. Uh, he was a chocolate lab. And the moment he heard a bowl or even like silverware, that would kind of, that's like his cue. Food's getting ready. He would get up, run to the other dog, and just attack him. It's pretty yeah. aggressive. <laughs> like anything, or even smell the kibble, or just even any cues that he realized, oh, food is getting ready. 
you just run an attack, right? So for us, <clears throat> resource guarding, how that's addressed, basically kind of making it an automatic behavior. So he got to the point where if I was getting his bowl ready, and he would stay wherever he's at. Um, if I was near him and I dropped a high value item like ham, cheese, kibble, his first instinct, no, no words or anything, would just to get up and walk away. Okay. Mm -hmm. Um, we find that the automatic leave is more valuable than like you saying leave it because technically anything is available until you say something, right? So he's always going to kick into resource guard until you say leave it versus having it be automatic and just like you just don't do that, right? Yeah, we um, would be going over for a fluke and everything like that, and kind of giving you like a waffle, like other and also like a foundation as well. If, if, if um, if you would like that, we'll talk about that, you know, like, we'll, we'll see how that goes and everything. Um, Anything else? Um, I don't think so. You said that I'll get like a follow up email with like all of the information laid out. Yes. Um, the follow up email will be from one of the assistants. Uh, she'll send you the programs we talked about with the prices, you know, the additional log, the e collars, your options for there. And then she will send you a form. So, so sending you maybe two links. One link will be just if you want to do in person, all you gotta do is sign and agree to a form. That's it. If you want to do the boring train or day current train, you need shot records, fecal exams, contact information profiles with the dogs and stuff like that, and then the form you sign. So once those um, uh, forms are signed and agreed to and completed, mm -hmm. we can go ahead and begin the billing and booking process. Uh, you know, we'll give you some dates and you'll give us some dates as well. And we'll kind of see what works best with us with, together. Um, the questions. Are you guys booking out like pretty far right now or where? Right now, the th three boring trains left. One, the last one left today. So right now we're open. I'm not sure how the future looks. Um, but I'm pretty sure you can, it should be pretty easily when you have whatever dates you give. I don't think, I don't think that we've had too many boring trains coming. Okay. Uh, here. And then we have a few daycare trains still, but that's separate from the boring train. Okay. Um, what else? Anything else? I don't think so. Um, if anything does come up, any other questions arise, uh, feel free to email me. I'll get back to you as soon as I can. But other than that, very nice speaking with you. Very excited to meet the doggos. And then just keep an eye out for that follow-up email. You should be receiving it either today or the following day. Um, but yeah, we'll just keep an eye on it. Okay. Cool. Thanks so much. I appreciate your time. Have a good night. Bye. You too. Bye-bye.